Hey guys, this is Luke from the Scoundrels Cantina, and welcome to another video. In this video, we'll be going over how powerful the legendary bounty hunter Boba Fett is, which will include his armor, weapons, most notable feats, skills, and abilities. As always, we're mixing the expanded universe and canon, because we believe that there is no reason why most of it can't fit together, at least before the events of The Return of the Jedi. For the most part, both versions are on the same page when it comes to this topic. Todd the other scoundrel will be having the honors in narrating this video, so anyway, let's begin. Hello there! Well first off, we're going to be going over Boba Fett's armor, weapons and other gadgets that were at his disposal. The most notorious Mandalorian armor that Boba was known by was passed down to him from his father, the legendary Mandalorian bounty hunter and genetic template of the Republic's clone army, Jango Fett. Originally, it was Mandalorian Shock Trooper style armor while in Jango's use and was forged from Durasteel and Mandalorian Iron aka Beskar. This meant that it was almost impervious to blaster shots but not as much as pure Mandalorian Iron armor. Eventually the entirety of Jango Fett's armor would be painted over, as Boba intended to make a legacy of his own which would even rival that of his father's. Anyway, Boba Fett's helmet had a very wide range of uses in comparison to any other Mandalorian armor wearing individuals, as it was heavily modified. Some sources state that it was made from Duraplast, as the material was also capable of receiving heavy doses of punishment even from a lightsaber and was also known to be used in many variants of Mandalorian armor as well as in Clone Commando Katarn class armor. Nonetheless, despite not having pure Beskar armor from the beginning, Boba would eventually get an upgrade many years later. Fett's helmet could control his weapons and jetpack through verbal commands and the heads-up display featured information on the surrounding environment with a wide field of vision. The HUD's data streams could be controlled by Fett's eye movements and blinking. In addition, an advanced radar allowed his HUD to provide information on nearby rooms and would allow him to perform tasks which would normally require a computer terminal. The helmet could also record video and play it back whenever it was needed. It also has an external targeting rangefinder which would track up to 30 targets from a distance of 100 meters and allow Boba to select priority targets. The helmet's broadband antenna could intercept and unscramble Comlink and Starship comm transmissions and could even summon the Slave 1 from up to 50 kilometers away. The helmet's T-visor had an electronic rangefinder showing range and movement for targets in a 360 degree radius. Its view can be magnified up to 50 times and also has an infrared scanner. The helmet's environmental filter system could filter out poisons and contaminants as well as provide FET with a 2 hour air reserve. Now on the left side of Boba Fett's chest armor was a digital life support system readout which showed the wearer's health status. He also wore a power armor liner shirt which had micro energy field projectors and two layers of thin ceramic plates in order to disperse physical and blast impacts reducing injuries and knockdowns. The power liner also gave him increased protection from fire, acid, intense heat and cold. His main clothing was a reinforced armor mesh battle and flight suit which was capable of blocking poisons and corrosives for a period of time. Boba also wore a leather utility belt that had 10 pouches with ammunition, thermal detonators and more. On his knee pads he had rocket dart launchers that had a 25 meter range which shot darts that carried nerve toxins, molecular acids, stun agents and of course explosive tips. The battle suit he wore had pockets on his shins which contained an anti-security blade, a survival knife, a jetpack adjustment tool, and a sonic beam weapon. The pair of boots that he wore had two spikes attached to the front which were very useful for him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Boba's wrist gauntlets were basically mounting points for a wide variety of different weapon systems. On his right wrist gauntlet he had retractable wrist blades just like his father before him, a circle arm ZX miniature flame projector and a 20 meter long fiber cord whip launcher all of which were very useful for close quarter combat. On his left wrist gauntlet he had a Blastech Industries Dura 24 wrist laser as well as an MM9 mini concussion rocket launcher with which he could deliver serious damage. Boba Fett wore a Z6 jetpack just like his father before him, although Jango's exploded when he fought Obi-Wan Kenobi on Kamino and was replaced with a JT-12 jetpack. The Z6 was a model generally favored by Mandalorians throughout the galaxy which could maintain sustained flight as well as offer the wearer short bursts of lift in order to gain a tactical advantage during combat. Its top speed was 145 km per hour. At the top of the Z6, Boba either had a turbo projected magnetic grappling hook or the standard anti-vehicle homing missile. Interestingly enough, the Z6 was very vulnerable and was known to explode by a single shot of a blaster or slash of a lightsaber and in Boba's example it ignited with the head of his stick leading to his fall into the Sarlacc pit. <laughs> Boba 
Boba Fett was known to have worn at least three different armor sets, the main one being the one we just covered, and the other two being identical to his father's, which just had a different color scheme from the olive green one and the red one he used with his bounty hunting team during the Clone Wars. As an honorable mention, Fett has also on one occasion used the Wing Blast Rocket Pack, which was a one-person weapon system capable of both atmospheric and deep space flight with heavy weapon systems equivalent of a starfighter. Boba has used many different types of blasters during his bounty hunting career, but we're just going to cover the ones that were an actual part of his weapon's arsenal since he obviously knew how to use any weapon he touched. In 20 BBY, when Boba Fett formed his own bounty hunting guild, he first used his father's Westar 34 pistols which fired very powerful blaster bolts and were designed for close range. Later he would take on his own main weapon of choice which was the EE-3 carbine rifle. The EE-3 was outfitted with a scope for sniping and a fast draw shoulder sling and it could fire both single shots for accuracy and in short bursts for more power. In 1 ABY, Fett was seen using a Sacross K-11 blaster pistol known as the Disintegrator, which was very similar to the West Star 34 pistols that Django used. While he used the Sacross K-11 as a sidearm and a secondary set of armor, he also utilized an Amban Face Pulse Blaster. This disruptor rifle could deliver a paralyzing electrical pulse at close range, while when used as a sniper rifle it could disintegrate organic matter on contact. Knowing everything that is at Boba Fett's disposal, now we're going to cover his skills, abilities, and of course... Ooh, fight scenes, makeup. From an early age, Boba Fett was trained by his father in both hand-to-hand -hand combat, how to use any blaster or weapon, and how to handle himself in deadly battle scenarios. As a kid, Boba participated in a few missions with Django to assassinate some bounties and even took part in killing some himself. In 22 BBY, he helped Django as much as he could when fighting Kenobi and Kamino by firing and piloting the Slave One. After his father's death, the Clone Wars started and Boba had a run-in with an extremely dangerous Jedi bounty hunter Dirge and managed to survive before working with a bounty hunter team to assassinate Jedi Master Mace Windu. When Boba infiltrated the Venator class cruiser where Windu was stationed at, he is shown to have been a perfect shot as well as skilled enough to outsmart and knock down fully grown clone troopers as well as take down the whole Venator class Star Destroyer. Even though he wasn't able to avenge his father's death and was eventually captured and taken to prison, he inflicted a lot of damage to the Republic Navy. During his time in Coruscant's prison, his personality would harden as well as his tough guy persona. At one point, he would pick a fight with bounty hunter Reiko Hardeen, aka the bounty hunter that supposedly killed Obi-Wan Kenobi, who was in truth Kenobi himself in disguise, all in order to start a prison riot organized by Cat Bane. Eventually, through unknown means, Boba alongside Bosk would leave prison and form their own bounty hunter syndicate called the Crate's Claw. At one point, the former Sith assassin Asajj Ventress would join his group for a mission to Corsit, where Boba would single-handedly fight off countless Kage warriors who were attacking the tram he was on. Out of his entire team, he was the one who lasted the longest, although in the end, wouldn't stand a chance against Asajj Ventress's change of plans as she subdued him with the Force. At one point, Boba Fett engaged the greatest bounty hunter of all time, which was Cad Bane, which is where the two were evenly matched and where he gained the famous dent on his helmet. After the fall of the Republic and the rise of the Empire, his bounty hunting career truly took off as he took on his father's armor indefinitely and modified it to his liking. His reputation would ferociously grow in the coming years and would be considered the greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy even by Darth Vader himself. Fett was well aware of his reputation as he conversed with the Sith Lord in an irrelevant tone that no one else besides Emperor Palpatine or Tarkin dared. He relied as much on his cunning and intelligence as on his pure muscle and combat skill and was very strong for a human, which he demonstrated in a fight with Bosk, whose species was known for its brute strength. In 12 BBY, he would be hired to accompany the 501st Legion to eliminate a clone rebellion created by rogue Kaminoans on Kamino, where he ruthlessly took down many clones that wore the same face as him. Some Imperial records show that Boba even served as a stormtrooper at one point, although deserted after he killed his commanding officer. Despite this, he was an wanted man by the Empire, but more like a regular employee and right-hand man to Vader. In 3 BBY, Boba Fett found himself fighting against Darth Vader himself after he disobeyed his orders on a certain bounty. As Fett was unable to break the Dark Lord's defenses and was being pushed towards a cliff overlooking molten lava, Vader used Force Persuasion in order to retrieve what Boba held, although the bounty hunter's strength of will allowed him to resist long enough to throw himself off the cliff. To Vader's shock, he peered over the edge only to find Fett's blaster waiting for him and shooting him straight in the forehead. After this, Vader completely pinned him down with the Force, certain that the bounty hunter was done for. To Vader's surprise, Boba kicked the item over the edge, and Vader released him in order to catch it with the Force, as the bounty hunter escaped. 
In 1BBY, Boba heard that Vader was fighting alone against many bounty hunters, and while everyone was trying to kill him, Fett sided with him and thus in a way earned the Sith Lord's respect once again. Not long after, Fett was hired to hunt down an extremely powerful clone of Starkiller, which led him to Kato and Emoidia, where a battle with the Force user had already taken place. There Boba would be attacked by the massive Gorok, which seemed to have been killed by Starkiller, but actually survived because it had a backup heart. Fett would kill the creature by shooting himself with a jetpack straight through the Gorok's chest and backup heart, thus finally killing it. Eventually, Boba would capture Juno Eclipse, the love interest of the original Starkiller, which would lure the clone of Starkiller to Kamino. During the Battle of Kamino, Boba Fett would take down a squad of rebel troopers and even stood his ground against the seasoned Jedi warrior Ram Koda before managing to escape. After the battle when Darth Vader was defeated, Fett would have a chance to take down Starkiller, although after seeing his love interest kiss him, he decided to spare them because he was an honorless. In 3 ABY, Boba Fett was hired to capture the smuggler Han Solo in order to lure Luke Skywalker to Darth Vader. He competed with a few of his fellow bounty hunters, but of course, ended up on top in the end. This would be the best paid bounty in his entire career, and boosted his already huge reputation as the greatest hunter in the galaxy. In 4ABY, on the other hand, Boba Fett would suffer a humiliating defeat at the hands of blind Han Solo, which was definitely a fluke as Fett's jetpack ignited due to an accidental hit of his stick, leading to his fall into the Great Pit of Carcoon. On the other hand though, this event would in truth boost his reputation even more because of his eventual escape from the pit, which happened not once, but twice. Only three known individuals in the entire galaxy were known to have escaped out of a Sarlacc, the first one being Zorba the Hutt, whom the Sarlacc spat out, the second one was Galen Merrick, aka Starkiller, who voluntarily went inside one, and the last one was Boba Fett himself. This was mostly due to his extremely tough Mandalorian armor, and his survival skills as he fought out of the beast's belly. The events that we covered were just the most notable of his feats, although there were plenty more. With all of this said, we would say that Boba Fett is definitely one of the most powerful bounty hunters in the entire Star Wars universe, judging by his armor, weapons, skills, and his most famous and impressive feats. We the Scoundrels would say that he would rank as one of the best, right alongside the greatest bounty hunter of the Old Republic era, Cal North, the 2000 year old, almost invincible bounty hunter Dirge, Cat Bane, who needs no introduction. and of course his father, the legendary Jango Fett. Anyway guys, this is it on the video, and we hope you enjoyed it, and learned something new about the vast galaxy of Star Wars. If you enjoy our content, make sure to check out our second lore channel The Crossroads Inn, and if you want to watch more videos like this one, the links to the playlist for other Star Wars stories and videos will be in the description down below. Also, if you want to support this channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one, and remember guys, God is awesome, may the Force be with you always, and we'll see you in another video, you rebel scum. This party's over.